Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Now, are you super busy and it feels like you have no time to create music? Well, me too. And in this video, I'm going to give you my five tips that are going to help you and me create more music in 2018. Let's go. So these tips are based on my experience over the last 12 months where I've managed to increase my music production and I've actually released two EPs and five singles in 2017. So in order to keep that going in 2018, I need to make sure I take my own advice and I thought I would share that with you as well in this video. Number one, play music every day. Now whether this is five minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour, whatever you can schedule in, make sure you schedule time with yourself to actually play and create music. Now, whether you want to be nerdy like me and grab a calendar and literally schedule in a time period where you're going to create music or just make sure that you're finding that time doesn't matter as long as you are doing something every day. Now, if you've only got five minutes, maybe pick up your instrument and just have a play. Play a cover of your favorite song. Just do something that is going to keep your creativity and keep you practicing and playing and creating more music. And the good thing is that the more you play, the more you'll want to play and the more time you will make. And one tip in order to make time that I had to do in 2017 was take a look at the things that you're doing right now that perhaps you could do less of. So for me, it was watching TV and playing video games, which I still do and still enjoy, but I probably do about half as much as I did a year ago. And that's freed up a whole bunch more free time for music creation. And if you need motivation to play and create music, why not set up a SoundCloud or a YouTube channel or a Facebook page and share some of your songs, even if they're cover versions of songs or some of your ideas, create and share, and that way you're motivated to continue creating and continue sharing. And if you'd like some ideas and inspiration, you can check out my Facebook music page at fb.me slash Music, and that link is down below here as well. Number two is to capture your ideas. And whether this is in an old school notebook or you use the voice memo app on your phone or you use something more sophisticated like Music Memos or GarageBand, as long as you are capturing your ideas, then you're going to be able to build on those and create more music with those as you develop and go along. And whatever system you use, make sure you're clearly labeling and tagging your ideas. There's nothing worse than scrolling through either a physical notebook or through an application and just seeing idea one, two, three, four, five. You've got no idea what the instrument is or what type of idea it is. So tagging, naming at the time you create them is going to really help you out down the track. And why not set up your smartphone to record yourself playing? You can just record a video and play your ideas for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, however long you want. That way you're not going to miss a single part. You don't have to keep it. You definitely don't have to share it, but you're not going to miss any one of those beautiful musical gems that you're creating while you're playing. And if you are looking to turn some of those ideas into a perhaps a demo, then you can check out my video where I use just an iPad and a pair of headphones to create a demo. You don't need any gear to create a good sound using GarageBand in iOS. Tip number three, finish your songs. So at the start of 2017, I had a whole pile of quarter, half, three quarter finished songs. And do you know how hard it is to release half a song? It's pretty darn hard. So if you finish your songs, you're gonna have a finished product that you can then tweak and work on and create into a final masterpiece. So when you're writing your songs, try to carry it all the way through. Get all the verses, all the choruses, all the bridges, the instrumentation, the arrangement. Get all of that done, write all of your lyrics. And it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because what you're gonna find is when you're doing your recording and your arranging, you're gonna be making tweaks and changing it as you go along anyway. But if you have an end-to-end -end song, it's gonna make that process so much easier. And for an example here, when I recorded my recent single called There's No Such Thing As College, right up to two days before release, I had an intro as part of that song. Now, in the final arranging process and the final mix down, it just didn't sound right. So I cut the intro and that is the final released song. So it doesn't matter if you have the song complete, you can still make changes right up to the end if it's gonna sound better in the song. And if you wanna take a look at the whole process I went through to record and mix that song, you can check out the video series with links down below. Number four, 
release your music. Get your music out there in one form or another. And I don't care if it's on SoundCloud or on your own Facebook page, or if you distribute it professionally to Spotify and iTunes and Apple Music, you want to share your music. Now, a theory that I like that was made popular by author Seth Godin is that art only becomes art when you ship it. And what does that mean? It means that you share your music with other people. You get it out there so that other people can experience the music that you've worked so hard to create. Now, yes, this can be scary and not 100% of people are going to like everything that you produce and that is totally okay. I'm sure you don't love every genre of music, every artist, every song that you hear. Everything is up to people's taste but by sharing it, you're going to get the people that do like that style of music and do like your song to be able to share in it and provide you with some great and useful feedback as well. Now, when you're sharing your music, consider who you're sharing with and ensure that you're sharing with people that you trust or at least that you're taking on the feedback of people who you trust because you will get feedback from people that may not be super useful. For example, when I first recorded my song, Anxiety, I got some feedback from another user who said, I thought a song about anxiety should be a lot heavier than this. So did I grab my acoustic version, add in some like heavy metal guitars and big drums? Well, no, because that wasn't the feel that I was going for. And I got a lot of other great feedback that said, yes, this is a really good song. It really spoke to me. Uh, keep it the way it is. So make sure that you're looking at who's providing the feedback and which parts of the feedback that you listen to. And of course, if you are getting constructive feedback that is relevant from someone that you trust or a source that you trust, then make sure that you're able to take that on. It doesn't mean you have to change everything about your song based on that feedback, but definitely consider it because you're going to become a much better songwriter, arranger, and release much better music if you're listening to the feedback of people that have a good opinion that you actually trust. And finally, consider releasing your music professionally. It's easier than ever, and it has the added bonus of finalizing your song. So once you've released it to iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, there is no going back. And that's actually a really good way to make sure that you've completed your songs. And if you'd like to distribute your music, I have a video where I distributed one of my songs that you can check out below if you want to know all about the process and some of the systems that you can use to do that. Last but not least, number five, and this is a super important one, connect with a community. Now, I know what you might be saying, I don't live in Nashville or LA or New York or a vibrant music scene. Well, neither do I. I live in Adelaide here in South Australia. And whilst our music scene is pretty cool, uh, it is not the easiest thing to connect with people. So what is the answer? Well, it's what you're watching right now. It is online communities. And these vary from YouTube channels like this one, where you can comment and chat with people in the comments, Facebook user groups, forums, websites. There's a whole bunch of ways that you can actually communicate, collaborate, and learn from other people that are doing exactly what you're doing. And one of the great parts of these communities is that you can share your music and you can also listen to other people's music and you can quickly get a feel, as I said in my last tip, for whose feedback you can trust. And when you start getting that really good quality feedback, it's gonna really start enhancing your songs and your music and you're gonna start creating some really killer songs in 2018. One warning though, make sure you're not just doing this. So it is great to watch tutorial videos. Please feel free to watch as many of my videos as you like, but don't use it as a substitute for actually creating your own music. Once you've done with that, once you've been inspired, you've got the idea, you've got the concept, pick up your instrument, grab your digital audio workstation or garage band or whatever you use and start producing and creating music because that's the only way that you're actually going to be able to release your own art and ship some great music to the rest of the world. And before I finish up here today, I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone for your support in the last 12 months. From those who've been with me right from the start and have been watching this channel for a long time to those who are watching their very first video here today, I couldn't do this without the support, encouragement, and feedback that you provide. So thank you, and I look forward to continuing to create content and hopefully motivate and inspire you to create some more music in the next year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.